O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. We're finishing up our five practices series where we've been talking about living as everyday missionaries, joining in what Jesus is already doing in our homes and in our workplaces and in our neighborhoods and in the places uh, where we shop and those kinds of things. So uh, that's what this whole series has been about. It's been uh, very much practical. Five practices. What are are those practices that put us into position uh, for uh, joining Jesus on his mission? Well, first, seeking the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you as well. Joining into what Jesus is already doing. Not going out for him, but with him. Oh, big, game-changing idea there, right? The second week we talked about hearing from Jesus and the importance of being immersed in God's word so that it springs forth from us spontaneously when we have those opportunities to share the hope that's in us. Hearing from Jesus is all about tuning our instruments uh, to hear more clearly, tuning out some of the distractions and cacophony and all that. Then we talked about talking with people as an important practice, recognizing that Jesus can do more, far more, uh, with two people who are talking with each other than he can with two people who are successfully ignoring each other. And we made a distinction there uh, that we're not called to talk at people, but we're called to talk with them, all right, all right? And so um, that's the deal there. In our fourth week, last weekend, we talked about ministering through prayer, how we can not just use prayer as a tool to grow in our relationship with God, but that we can use prayer as a gift, as a, a serving instrument as we're engaging with other people. And there we challenged ourselves uh, to move from, I'll pray for you, to, can we pray right now? And it was really neat uh, because several of you uh, kind of came back to me at various times this week and shared uh, different stories of your journey and trying this on, okay? And it was really, really exciting, all right? Nothing, almost nothing more encouraging as a pastor than when you kind of hear that the sermon was lived out and these kinds of things, right? So uh, that's kind of the deal. So uh, this member, Becky, uh, sent me a message and said, uh, yesterday, uh, I got a message from a friend that her breast cancer had returned after 10 years cancer free what a discouraging thing this was a childhood friend of hers and someone that she knew was a Christian mind you as she's uh, engaging in this I think email or Facebook conversation with her and stuff so um, I started to type I'll pray for you because it's just natural it's the default mode I think um, and then remembered the sermon she said uh, I then replied that I wanted to pray for her and I typed up a prayer prayer and sent it to her and I got a response and she thanked me uh, for the prayer that I gave her and she said that she felt me holding her hand as she was reading it to herself in her room it just kind of collapsed the distance and separation and there was nearness between these friends who were separated and we could say Jesus was near in that moment as well right cool stuff right Right? Come on. Um, so then this week we move on, right? So praying with people out loud or, you know, text uh, is a powerful way uh, that we can uh, share with people an experience of the goodness of God's kingdom. But it's not the only way that we can do that. Doing good, doing, uh, we could say, random acts of kindness uh, can be another way uh, of taking hold of that. But before we dive into all that, uh, let's remember, let's recall for ourselves uh, our foundation, right? Um, so the good news of Jesus is fundamentally, by grace you've been saved through faith. Not your own doing, it's the gift of God, not a result of works, and so nobody has bragging rights. 
Nobody has something over against another person because of the way in which they're practicing this doing good stuff. It's that. It's that simple. It's free. It's a gift. It's something we didn't seek out and we didn't deserve or earn, but God gave it to us because it's exactly what we needed. So you can certainly share the good news of Jesus with people in words, but it's important to remember as we enter into uh, this, our final week, that it's important uh, that people see Jesus in us before they hear about Jesus from us. It's kind of that old adage, like, they don't care how much you know until they know that you care kind of stuff, right? Um, so, our eternity has been radically changed by Jesus, this gift of eternal life, which means that life now, in the present, is transformed, and we see things through new lenses. So the big question is, not just what are we saved from, like sin and death, but what are we saved for? What do we do with our lives now as followers of Jesus? Well, Paul continues. Another beautiful verse on the heels of that. For we are God's masterpieces, his one-of-a-kind works of art, his treasured possessions created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. By the way, sideline, I just can't help myself here. Um, so outside of this space, you may have been noticing like a little display area that's coming out of our Creative Connections class on Saturday morning. Some really neat artwork. Today, there are some prayer portraits out there that are just phenomenal, just beautiful works of art. One of a kind masterpieces, likenesses of some of the participants uh, in the class at through words of prayer, right? So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So check it out on your, on your way out. But God's masterpieces, his treasured possession. Do you wake up and look at yourself in the mirror in all of your grandeur in the morning and say, I am God's one-of-a-kind masterpiece? Maybe you didn't quite do that this morning on Spring Forward weekend. But what if you could? And what if you did? And what if random acts of kindness are not so random, actually? What if the unplanned good that we go around doing, sprinkling hope here and there and everywhere uh, for other people, is actually the pre-planned stuff of God? This is exactly what Ephesians 2.10 is telling us. As people loved by God, saved by Jesus, God's Spirit works through us to do good for our neighbors. And our neighbors being anyone, anywhere, right? During our five practices series, though, we've been getting super practical and super local. A simple but important way to get into position to join Jesus on his mission uh, is to look for ways to physically respond to people's needs in our neighborhoods. What are they almost ready for? What grace are they in need of, right? What good can we do for them? What good has God prepared in advance for us to do for them? Ah, kind of a different way of looking at that. Now, our readings, first of all, uh, that gospel reading we read from the Jesus Storybook Bible shows uh, Jesus in the act of going around looking for good. And I think we can kind of relate to some of his experiences along the way. Jesus comes across as a very busy guy, in demand. He's got a lot of things on the to-do list, and he's being called out uh, in urgent kinds of ways. And along the way, he's coming into interruptions. And so he's responding to things there, and then it's almost too late to help out. But then is it? The time hadn't passed, and he still had an opportunity to help. Now, maybe you're not going around raising the dead, but maybe... The words that you share bring a deeply discouraged and downtrodden person from death to life in a very real and tangible way. That your encouragement has that impact on people. That your giving people time and dignity has an effect of changing their reality and helping them to see the world with eyes of hope again. The other readings, they turn our attention to how this principle that we've seen in Jesus going around doing good, how that's evident and it's transferred into the lives of his followers, right? 
So each of those readings in their own way kind of say, hey, it was good for Jesus. Now you go and do it kind of thing as his followers. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And so now we are the ones who are finding true life by losing it, by giving it away. Yeah. And that even a cup of cold water, says Jesus in Matthew 10, is no small thing. That even a cup of cold water shared in a timely manner and with love and in Jesus' name is a big deal. Yeah, there's a couple of quotes from Mother Teresa that really dovetail nicely with all of this. And so the first one uh, that I'd share with you is this. Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Beautiful, inspiring kind of thing. And then she says further, never worry about numbers. Help one person at a time. And always start with the person nearest you. Pretty phenomenal words, right? So this starts here and it ripples out. It impacts homes and the people next door and across the street and down the street until it sort of ripples through all of the neighborhoods of the northwest suburbs. That's how it works. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that's within our reach. Any small thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this poor, suffering world, will help immensely. So what if? What if you took a meal over to the family who just had a baby, as uh, some of you guys have been in the habit of doing these kinds of things? What if you talk to that moody person at work that everybody else avoids like the plague and you gave them the time of day? What if you fill in the blank? What if all those things were good works that God prepared for you to do from the time you were washed with baptismal water and God called you as his son or daughter? What if you pushed aside fear and inflexibility that caused you to be stuck in ruts and just did something good? You'd find that you're living the true life that Jesus spoke about. Life lived doing good for others. Life lived following Jesus. Life lived in the kingdom. In these simple acts of kindness, you see Jesus is bringing the kingdom of heaven straight to earth. And people who thought God didn't exist, that church was obsolete, or even that Jesus was overrated, now, through these acts of love, see God right in the midst of the mess and suffering of their lives in our world. They see it through your hands, through your time spent with them, through your generosity, through your compassion. This is the true life Jesus is calling us to. Doing the good things God has already planned and prepared for us to do in the here and now. So what's your story going to be? What's the story going to be for you that you get to discover that in fact God has pre-written into your life? What a cool journey. This is not the end, though it is the end of our series. It is only just the beginning. And it's worth saying that this is part of the DNA of what it is to be a follower of Jesus, what it is to be the church, what it is to be Prince of Peace in Palatine. Why do we care about this? Because we care about what God cares about. We care about who he treasures, which is all the people of the earth right? Including all those who didn't make it on Spring Forward Weekend, or who maybe don't make it on any weekend. We're called to reach people with the good news, with the grace of Jesus. We do that in our words and our actions. Now, we've been trying to equip you through this series to do just that in an ongoing way, and we're going to keep trying to do that, okay? But there are tools uh, that we've given you along the way, like the coaster with the five practices listed out and the five questions. If you didn't get one or if you want an extra one of them, there's still some uh, additional ones over at the Connection Center for free, right? Just take them. Uh, there's also books available, Joining Jesus on His 
mission, the foundation of this series, apart from, uh, you know, in, the, in addition to, you know, the Bible, right? Um, but you can pick up a copy of that, or if you want to give it away to somebody else, you can do that, right? Um, share what you've been given. Um, there's also neighborhood maps around us, right? We can start to think intentionally about the neighborhoods in which God's planted us, and we can get together with other people who are living in those very same neighborhoods and pray for the sake of the people who are right under our noses to whom God has called us to share just a little bit of grace. So, look forward to continuing the journey with you. Now, as we close out the message, I'm going to share with you a brief video. Uh, disclaimer, this is going to look like a political message at first. We are not giving a political message or any kind of endorsement in this uh, church, just to be clear. Uh, there, there shall not be any misunderstanding there. Okay, right? Uh, so, but uh, follow the video and see if you can get to the heart of the message here and the thing that you're being asked. Every four years, the citizens of our country head to the polls to elect our nation's leader. Just in our generation alone, candidates have emerged with various backgrounds, ideas, and policies. But they all have one thing in common. Promises. Eliminate the debt. Secure our borders. Boost the economy. Fix education. Protect Medicaid. Lower taxes. Cut spending. Reduce government. Increase jobs. Restore values. And make America great again. And now we are faced with a decision between left and right, liberal and conservative, Democrat and Republican. So we attend the rallies, write the checks, hear the debates, analyze the polls, listen to the spin, watch the ads, follow the campaigns, pick a candidate, go to the polls, cast our votes, and then we wait. And four years later, we do it all over again. But what if this time something changed? What if Christ followers throughout our country didn't just listen to promises? What if we made the promises? What if we promised to become the light of the world, the salt of the earth, the hope for our nation? What if we promised to love our neighbors, forgive our debtors, and pray for our enemies? What if we promise to feed the hungry, care for the sick, and serve the poor? What could happen if we kept our promises? Maybe America really can be great again. So there you go. Engage appropriately in the political system. Be a good citizen. All that kind of stuff. But recognize what kingdom you are really a part of and how you can be active in changing the world. One small act of kindness at a time. And all God's people said, Amen.